I started dancing at 18, which is a little late for a dancer, but um, I was really inspired by music videos. Michael Jackson, Usher, Chris Brown, Justin Timberlake, they all used choreography in different ways, and uh, I just started learning first in my bedroom, following their steps, and then eventually traveling to New York, to LA, to take classes and train. At the back of my mind, as much as it was always for fun, but it was always, always a dream as well. Um, I grew up in Africa most of my life, um, well, up until the age of 11, um, and I danced, and that was my be and end all. Um, and I don't think people understood when I meant that that was a dream and I was going to follow it through. So every negative job that I've ever had or negative situation or scenario, I've always turned into a positive. Um, for instance, I was in tour two days before we left to go on tour. They didn't have like the budget to take all of us in the end. Um, a lot of the shows got cancelled, so they ended up doing two shows which in Mexico and they could only take six boys rather than eight or nine of us. So I was one of the new boys to get cut because I was in the new boys. Sometimes in the industry, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So that's also a thing as well. You can't let that affect you or get in terms of getting to your, getting your head because it's your path, it's just different, it's a different scenario. I decided to get myself a new job working as a creative director for a company that I've wanted to work for for a while, called Nappy Tabs, um, who are like Emmy Award winning, winning choreographers and creative directors. So I got a job with them. When you face rejection, you really have two options. You either can let it motivate you, or you can let it uh, hurt you and, and bring you down. It's easier said than done. You know what, it's not even a case of that I don't get told no. It's that I'm kind of past looking for it. And nowadays, if I, if, I'm, if I don't ask for a job, or I'm on pencil, and then I get a random email saying, oh, they got released, I'm like, oh, okay. It's a lot easier now. Because, like I said, the, the older you get, the more you do. I knew what I wanted to do, I knew what I, what I wanted to be, and there was no question about that. Um, regardless of how people made me feel or questioned my talent, questioned me as a person or me as a dancer, um, I took it on. Whether I used it or didn't, that was my choice, but I picked myself back up and just got on with it. And you get rejected, or any type of rejection, is to remember that you are on your own journey, you cannot focus on what everyone else is doing because that is what's going to really put you down. Like I think you can always kind of just trust yourself more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like professionalism doesn't cost anything, but you know, especially I think in this because your reputation is everything. When you think about your journey and your path in life, what's for you is always going to be for you. And because somebody says no, that's actually them saying yes as well. At the end of the day, that's what you have to do. If you're going to get rejected, you have to keep going. It's the same thing in any industry. The artists have to do the same. The dancers have to do the same. The creative directors have to do the same. Everyone does. So I always tell my dancers, it's, it's really important to listen to everything the choreographer says in an audition. If they say, I want you to hit this really full out, make sure you do that. You want to take every note seriously because we're looking for really small details sometimes. Passion is one thing that I really look for in dancers. Um, I don't want you to be a carbon copy of anything. Uh, I want you to be yourself, but I want you to be the true version of yourself. I want to look for somebody that I feel confident in working with, um, that trusts me, um, will trust me to take that step with me. Um, and honestly, overall, like somebody that can dream with me. Being a smart dancer, so if someone gets corrected, apply that to yourself. Try and be, be quick, be sharp, be smart. So that would be one of the things I would say, you know, try and develop the instincts and the ability to be a smart dancer because the more reliable, trustworthy you are on stage, the more you're going to get booked again. And learning to dress appropriately for whatever you're trying to sell or whatever the brand is, learning what your freestyle, but your freestyle is your own um, free movement and your own, your own moment to shine and learning to adapt it to that job. Confidence, confidence, performance, foundation, foundation of knowing that you need to, like I said, I've said before, you need to know how to blend in with everyone else, be unity, know how to dance in a group and not change the choreography yourself. The whole part where you're doing that choreography, I want to see the choreography as it is. I've created this and I see it in my head a specific, a particular way. I don't need you to add you to it yet until I've given you the room to do so. Social media has really helped 
dancers a lot, actually all artists, because it gives you more power to put your work out there. It used to be that you couldn't show your choreography to an artist or to an audience unless you had an agent that booked you an audition, that got you into the room, and you had all these steps just to get in front of people. But now you can literally put stuff online and millions of people can see it in a matter of days. It's insane. So I've seen so many people that were not living in LA, didn't have an agent, didn't know anything about the industry, and they posted a video online, and an artist saw it and literally flew them out to be in a music video or go on their tour. So I just always encourage you know, dancers all over the world to post their choreography, post their freestyles, whatever it is that you do, get it out there because you never know who could see it and potentially give you an amazing opportunity. There has been so many amazing things that have happened with social media and then equally so many displeasing and um, angry and negative things that have happened. Um, but I think what we can do now is, as dancers, separate what is actually going to help uh, people grow and develop as, as dancers and train, work harder like that, and then what is actually uh, set to promote our brand and ourselves as a business person. Because some people, yeah, you have a voice, but how are you utilizing it? Take responsibility for learning and I don't just mean in class but like often I hear people ask questions that like I'm like you could google that and I'd still answer it of course but I'm like you could have googled that but like you know take responsibility for, you, for your learning in that way as well and if, if you if there are things that you put the work in to try and find and you can find yes then find someone who can give you the answer or at least lead you towards the answer and they will answer you know most of the time people will you know most people are nice people you know yeah. which is great um, and that's another one be like people will know if you're not actually not um, one of the biggest things on the forefront of my mind is um, that you have to be open to uh, not just thinking about what your body needs to do in a job but go past the physical and get to also the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual part of your career. Um, those are just as important, if not more important, than the physical stuff. It's one thing to do steps, it's another to um, experience them. Yeah, uh, discipline, um, look for criticism, try and get it. Look for people to give you a correction, look for that, don't, try, don't go to anything that's just easy for you, go to the things that are difficult, we all know that. Work hard, work hard, be disciplined, and just keep on striving for it, practice, practice, practice. That's what I would say, humble, humble. Be humble, be business orientated, know that it's not about what you do, it's also about what you say, and how you do and how you act. When I am moving, I don't physically have to do it that there's something, there's an energy, there's a force. It almost feels like I'm going numb. You know, I'll like take class or I'll be choreographing and I'll feel like I'm, uh, I'm so drained. Why am I feeling such a drainage? And, and then once the music cuts on, it's like whatever emptied in my vessel, it was filled with something else that was untouchable. Mainly because I want to help other people with creating or teaching. It helps other people, that's why we do it. Art is it's a sharing, it's about it's meant to be shared. You know, you're not going to keep it to yourself, like, especially when it comes to teaching, I don't like to do that. So, yeah, man, it's just about it. It's all, it all links to a feeling, whether it's for me dancing wise or creating wise, for me personally as well, but creating wise for other people as well. I want everyone to just feel what I felt at that moment. And when you get that, oh, there's nothing like it. When you see everyone else in it, you're like, you've, you've linked with me for that second and you really, you're really there with me. Yeah, it's the best feeling ever. The kabuki was just like the curtain drops and behind it, I'm like, oh God, here we go, right. The moment that that crowd goes wild and the, the kabuki drops, it's just like urge of energy just goes through me and I'm just like, oh, what was I talking about? I could be absolutely shattered, but somehow I find the strength to do it. And I just love it.
I, I think there's something really naturally human about a connection between the movement of your body and sound and rhythm. You know, and I, I think it all comes back to like maybe even the sound of your own heartbeat, like that rhythm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I just think there is there's something that just feels really good, mm -hmm. you know, and feels uh, just feels right, I guess. I dance because I'm good at it. I'm, I'm good at good at creating. I'm good at like um, creating visuals. I like anything that has movement. I like anything that um, can tell a story. And you can do that with movement. You can do that with dance. It's a good. It's a great way to get in touch with music and like lose yourself a little bit. It's a great art form. And there's so much you can do with it. I think that's why I really love my dance. You can. It can be, dance isn't just the body of humans dancing. I like dancing with lights. I like um, seeing how I can make content dance or, you know, like there's just, like I see movement and dance through everything. Uh, the reason I dance is because I love the, the community of it. I love music. I love being in a space where everybody is, is excited together and just like vibing on the music. One of the first memories I have of like, really falling in love with dance was I used to dance with this crew back in my hometown in Virginia and we would have rehearsals and we would all be so tired at night we would get to rehearsal and had long days at work at school whatever it was and the first 20 minutes were all like uh, you know dragging around and by the end of the rehearsal like everybody was like screaming and sweating and hugging each other and just like such a good energy and that was when I realized like oh it's not just about like doing steps it really is about a community and sharing with each other and, and just this amazing vibe and that's what I try to recreate in every one of my workshops is that energy so that you know people can take that home and use it as motivation to keep training whenever they're alone and they're not in that space.